Welcome back to Radio Free Canada. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. We are recording segments for you 15 minutes at a time because a quickie can be just as satisfying as a longie. And that's what we're proving right now. (laughs) So stay tuned because we're going to bring you attitude and opinion and only opinion. Do not jump off a bridge because of what we're talking about or the media we bring you as protected under international fair usage copyright law. And everything we say is protected under Section 2 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Remember, we're reminding you, if you're an in-the-box thinker, if you think that McDonald's is a restaurant... Or that CHBC is a news, then then stop stop listening listening now. We don't need people that are so uptight they have to wear a suit and tie each and every day to feel good about themselves. And, of course, we're mocking conservatives just slightly. Of course, there are people who wear suits and ties who don't, aren't so uptight that you can put coal up their butts and get diamonds next week. So we're saying a grand hello to those people who are awake on the left side of their brain also. Speaking of the uh, mainstream media, yes, there's something going on in Doha, Qatar this week that they're not talking about. There's an international climate conference addressing climate change. So we're going to spend the next 15 minutes inserting a little bit of the environment into the conservative brain cells. This is Radio Free Canada with a quickie segment that makes everybody grin. Let's start things off with my friend, Mr. Mercer. Well, summer is over. It was one of the wettest and coldest on record. They say winter is going to be the same. If it seems like all the seasons are becoming kind of similar, that's because they are. At Environment Canada, we're making it easier to understand the planet's shifting weather patterns. From now on, there will be only one season. Winfrisprummer. It's a fun time-saving amalgam of all the seasons. Winfrisprummer is fun to say. Right, kids? Win. Yes, that's right, kids. Plus, no more months. Just one long month called Novapuary. You'll save thousands of dollars on costly calendars that use as many as 12 pieces of paper. Novapuary. Just one long kind of cold, wet, humid, followed by a freakishly strong storm kind of month. Plus, it takes the guesswork out of what to wear, and it's easy to remember with the Environment Canada song. Wind for summer's here, and the days are short, and the clocks go back, and they go ahead again soon, I think. We're Environment Canada. We're thinking for you. Brought to you by the Conservative Party of Canada and Big Coal. Get used to it. He's totally my favorite guy, man. We're talking about hitting it on the money. Well, you know, the weather is changing or the climate is changing, and they are starting to pay attention. However, we're not doing anything about it. Mainstream news is so far behind on this right now. Democracy Now!, an interesting news analysis company, says that the mentions of climate change have gone down by 70% since the Al Gore days. Really? And it's massive. Major News is not talking about the environment in any effective way. It's just not shocking enough. So it's not keeping people fearful. We're going to be keeping you informed. So let's do it. Let's talk about the fact that Victoria has aquaponics on its brain. That's right. They have a pitch video here for people to donate through crowdsourcing to help pay for internships at this farm they're doing in Victoria. So I'm going to do a big shout out to our counselors right here at City Hall in Kelowna and say the words Municipal Sustainability Project. That's on our uh, that's on our firing line right here at Radio Free Canada. And I'm going to be talking about that right after we take a look at what they're doing in Victoria. Indiegogo. My name is Angela Moran and I am a mother, a flamenco dancer, and an urban farmer in Victoria, British Columbia. My journey into farming started around 10 years ago and about seven years ago I was the lucky lady to take over the lease at the Mason Street City Farm. 
In that time, I've been forging relationships with local businesses, local community members, and local nonprofits. And it has become quite clear to me that Victoria has a voracious appetite for local, healthy food. The model that we've created at the Mason Street City Farm involves community members, young and old. And we now have the means necessary to empower individuals by providing them with the skills necessary to create their own productive urban farming business. And this is why we need your help. We want to offer four paid internships to people in Victoria that don't typically have access to food skills and food education. We are not going to change the current globalized destructive food system if we don't change who has access to the knowledge and skills required to build a community food business. The funds donated to this campaign will go directly to the interns that will be working at the Mason Street City Farm next year. In addition, we're super stoked to be bringing Victoria its first new greenhouse aquaponics system. Hey there, I'm Jesse Brown and I work alongside Angela here at the City Farm and I'm super excited about some innovative practices that we're going to use to grow food here at the City Farm. Let me tell you about them. Aquaponics uses 90% less water than conventional farming while providing higher yields with less labor. Fish and vegetables are grown together in a recirculating system. The fish water fertilizes the vegetables and in turn the plants clean the water. The amazing thing is we can literally build this system directly on top of concrete. This method of food production provides many solutions to the problems we face feeding people in the city and we think it is vital that more people learn about this approach to urban food production. Your donations will also go towards building Victoria's first greenhouse aquaponic system. We see what we're doing at the Mason Street City Farm as part of a solution to our current food crisis and a real contribution to a growing green economy. Check out our campaign online. Check out our amazing perks. They make great gifts! <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago I had a student who was doing some weeding and she accidentally pulled up a small carrot and she just sort of quietly remarked to herself because I was beside her, oh my god, I didn't know that these came from the ground. And that's the kind of reconnection that this farm and Angela in particular bring to students. The benefit for me directly also is that I'm able to use some of the produce in my truck. Amazingly enough, you don't need massive farms to produce viable amounts of food to sell to chefs and restaurants. And so get involved and help us farm for the future. Right there in Victoria, they're doing it. They're doing the solution. That's right. They're actually practicing urban farming, proving we don't need big agribusiness that destroys our environment. We don't need big chain grocery stores. We live it where they create um, they create food. So there's no reason to support huge trucking companies. There's no reason to support huge monopolistic grocery trains. But it's really cool. They're teaching these people these urban farming skills as well. And the aquaponic stuff is really wild. So we're challenging City Hall, and we've been challenging them for two months now, presenting them with solutions and an opportunity. Not once has City Hall contacted us about this. Well, you know why. <laughs> I know. They don't care. They have huge towers to put up, don't That's you right. know? They have a new street to build. By the way, I'm not really happy with the way Bernard Street is turning out. It looks pretty ugly to me. And the worst. The, okay, take a look at Kelowna for those of us joining us worldwide. Possibly the very ugliest lampposts we've ever seen. Are they going to put those everywhere in town? <laughs> I mean, they had a good I theme sure going. I sure hope not. They had a really good theme going. They had some really nice ones around town. If you take a look down by Gyro Beach, and, you know, just beautiful lampposts put up. Sure, they're artistic. But remember, City Hall's more interested in taking shopping carts away from the homeless than supporting them. Let's talk about alternative. Let's talk about solutions, okay? Because this is cool. Well, climate change is really dangerous and it's really happening and we got to get off of fossil fuels. Everybody's saying nuclear, but there's a new way to get off nuclear. Take a look at this. The Simple Show explains how to exit nuclear energy once and for all. This is nuclear energy. Of course, emitting no CO2 sounds great, but it's risky. If a disaster happens, you have to write off the investment and the population is at risk. No one expected an earthquake and a tsunami, but we have learned that even the impossible happens. And if that happens, who pays? You. 
Solar and wind cannot supply all the energy we need. And without subsidies, it would not work today. Who pays these subsidies? You. The blue economy proposes that we work with what we have, turn problems into opportunities, be creative, and inspire entrepreneurs to make it happen. Whatever we propose must be good for your health and for the environment, and it has to be cheaper. For example, here's a water treatment plant. It costs money. And here is household waste. Sending it to the dump costs money and generates methane that damages our climate. If we dump leftover food into the wastewater, we generate energy, biogas, drinking water, fertilizer, and make money. Here is a pylon. It transports electricity, which costs money. A wind generator produces electricity, but you need to put it on towers, which are expensive and ugly. We simply put a vertical wind turbine inside the pylon. Now the pylon is stronger, generates electricity without new visual pollution, and we make money. Here is a solar panel. It works on both sides. So if optics concentrate and send the sunshine to the bottom too, we make four times more electricity with three times less material. The chamber, made from recycled plastic, gets hot. Now, solar also makes heating and hot water all at once and cheap. We place these panels on landfills. So land of no use now gives us energy and makes money. These are not only three good ideas, each one has been implemented. And these sources of electricity are cheap. So cheap that it is embarrassing that we kept on wasting taxpayers' money on subsidizing coal, oil, and nuclear for decades. If your country were only to use a small part of its infrastructure, then there will be more than enough renewables to replace all nuclear power. And everything can be made locally generating jobs. Actually, it's possible to save so much money that there would be enough cash to pay for the closure of nuclear. How? If we sell this renewable and cheap electricity at the same price as before, and we eliminate all subsidies, then we make a lot of money without having to pay more. This cash will build consensus that nuclear has to go, and that makes everyone happy. Think of it. Siri.org. And you know why I love doing those ones? Well, they're so cool to see innovative ways to make money and build sustainability. We could use our entire infrastructure as it exists right now in an efficient manner if banks and government didn't stand in front of it. Well, don't you know fossil fuel trumps all, you know? They're the big money out there. Remember that trade trumps all too and we've got a major update coming up it turns out the environment is under fire with another omnibus bill oh really yes and canada is one of the worst polluters in the world yeah doesn't that make you proud to oh, be canadian man we got to change things right now be part of the change and remember change is happening everywhere coming up on the show next week we're going to be talking about countries kicking monsanto out that's relevant and very important we'll also be talking about canadian mining interests and how they run roughshod over aboriginal peoples and make sure that you get informed about the aboriginal fight to get them to owe up to treaties that they've been ignoring for the last 100 years. Also, we'll be taking a close look at what else is going on in the world as far as international relations are concerned. Radio Free Canada, I am Darren Howard. And I am Robert Nisbet. We will be back again, so make sure you stay tuned, get informed, and realize activism is working. We'll be back. <laughs>